Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and I was always told I had a voice radio, so today I am showing you another deck that I am in love with. I recently showed you the Raichu Pachirisu deck that got a top 32 finish over in Collinsville, Illinois. Today I'm showing you a deck that fell a little bit short, but it got a top 64 finish. It was the 41st best deck. And 41st might not sound great, until you realise that there were 1,066 Masters, and 41st out of 1,066, that sounds pretty gosh darn good to me. It's all built around Persimian. And like all of the decks that I'm really excited about at the moment, it came around in Ultra Prism. Now, we've had Persimian for a while. Persimian has been a deck since the Sun and Moon block started. Team play for just a double colorless energy, does 10 damage, plus 30 more for each of your bench Persimian. So you have free Persimian on the bench, you do 100 damage. And then of course people started going, well hang on a second, why don't I just combine that with Mew? And then all of a sudden I can use Mew to copy Persimian. I can now have four Persimian on the bench, so I'm actually doing 130 damage rather than 100. And I'm also now hitting for Psychic Weakness with Mew, or Fighting Weakness with Persimian. Sounded good, but in the end, it just wasn't doing enough damage. It was popular for a while, but it dipped off. But now we have a new Persimian in Ultra Prism. And the thing is that this new Persimian makes Persimian great again. You see, this Persimian has the ability Power Huddle. As long as this Pokemon is on your bench, your Persimian's attacks do 30 more to the active. So now, it's actually 60 more damage plus Persimian. So let's say you've got three of these Persimian on the bench. You're now hitting 190 damage for just a double colorless energy. Although you must remember that when you use Mew to copy Persimian, you're not actually getting the advantage of this Persimian with Power Huddle, because Power Huddle only adds 30 more to your Persimian's attacks. So you can use Mew to copy team play, and the new Persimian will add 30 damage, because they're a Persimian on the bench, but they won't add the extra 30, because Mew is attacking, not Persimian. But Mew is still important because we're in a format at the moment where Boswell is everywhere and you need to be hitting for weakness. And I made the point in several videos lately. We are in a two Pokemon format. Zoroark, which is weak to fighting, and Boswell, which is weak to psychic. So if you give me a fighting deck that also has a psychic type attacker, I can give you a deck that has an awful lot of potential. Now the split is really important here because of course you can only play four Persimian and that's a little bit of an issue. So here the split that we did see that Kevin went for and I agree with this was three of the Ultra Prism Persimian, one of the Sun and Moon Persimian. Now on the one hand, this gives you the maximum amount of damage with your Persimian. On the other hand, it gives you one attacking Persimian. Now when you're using Mew to copy Persimian, that's fine, Persimian's on the bench. When you're attacking with Persimian, this leads to some nervous turns. First of all, it's going to get KO'd, so you will need to be getting it back every single turn. Although, to be honest, you've got Brooklyn Hill to search it, so just play a bunch of Rescue Stretcher and you should be fine. But it also means you've got to play Gladian here, because if your one attacking Persimian is prized, that is bad news. I mean, any of your Persimian being prized sucks, because then your damage output is greatly reduced, but if your one Sun and Moon Persimian is prized, you basically can't use Persimian. Gladian will get it out of the surprises, because you get to switch it with Gladian, so this deck you absolutely need Gladian. And that's basically the deck. You attack with a Sun and Moon Persimian, using the Ultra Prism Persimian to add damage, and then you use Mew if you want to be hitting for Psychic Weakness. Now, there are a bunch of other Pokemon you play in this particular deck. You play Octillery, just because it's extra draw power. Abyssal Hand lets you draw till you've got five cards in hand. That's quite nice for just allowing you to set up. And, of course, it's a water Pokemon, so Brooklet Hill will help you get set up here. We see Tapu Koko, because it's a single card. It's a basic Pokemon, and it's got free retreat. 
and for a double colorless energy, which you're using as your energy to attack here, then you get to do 20 damage to all of your opponent's Pokemon, which is quite nice. And with a choice band, you're hitting 100 against a Lightning Week GX like Ho-Oh. So that's a nice two-hit KO. That could actually be quite relevant in some particular matchups. We see the Watch and Learn Sudo Woodoo from Breakpoint, which attacks for, well, essentially one counter energy, and it just copies the attack your opponent used the previous turn. Boswell using Knuckle Impact, pop a choice band, you get a KO nice and easily. Something like a Zoroark using Riotous Beating, you copy it, but you're hitting for weakness, you'll get a KO. And I suppose we should mention counter energy here. It works for Sudowoodoo, it works for Mew, it works for Persimian. It basically gives you a fifth and sixth double colorless energy as long as you're behind on prizes. That sounds pretty good to me. One of the annoying things about Persimian was always searching for one of your four double colorless energy. Easier when you can use counter energy here. We use Regirock EX just because it adds 10 extra damage and sometimes helps you to hit those numbers. And obviously Tapu Lele GX because Wonder Tag lets you search for supporters. Supporters are important. In terms of energy, obviously you're playing four double colorless energy. That's absolutely key. You need it for Persimian, you need it for Mew. But you also play two counter energy here. Now counter energy is the only energy you can use for Sudo Wudu. But it also means that you've got extra double colorless that you can use with Persimian. Now, do remember it's only when you're behind on prizes. Otherwise, it's just one energy. But you know what? Could be worse. I mean, heck, you can even use Octillery's Hug here. Although you would have to use another energy as well as counter energy. It's not good. I'm just saying you could. Now, in terms of trainers here, we see a lot of things we would usually expect, but there are some things which are worth pointing out. You need to play Gladian here. Like I've said, you cannot have Persimian prized, especially the attacker. But recovery here is so much more important. You need to make sure you've always got all your Persimian out, but also you're playing one attacking Persimian. You've got to have it every turn. If it gets KO'd, you've got to get it back. So you play four Rescue Stretcher, even though most decks don't play as many as four. And you also play four Puzzle of Time, so that you can have that extra recovery. Play two at the same time, search your discard for any two cards, that's important. We see Nest Ball here, which allows you to search for a basic Pokemon, put it straight onto your bench. Again, you need to get all of your Persimian out as fast as you can, and that's important. So you need cards like Nest Ball to get them out. We see Energy Lotto here. Energy Lotto lets you look at the top seven cards of your deck. Find a um, special energy there and put it into your hand. In a deck that only plays double colorless and counter energy, that's pretty gosh darn fun. And we do see here Special Charge, which again helps you get those special energy back. Recovery is important. We also see a single copy of Counter Catcher here. Kind of cool. You can only use it when you're behind on prizes, but you grab a bench Pokemon of your opponent's into the active, and you know what? That's pretty useful. And in a deck playing lots of low HP single prize Pokemon, you'll often go down by a prize early in the game. That makes Counter Catcher pretty gosh darn good. Here is the list as a whole, and the rest of it is what we would expect. Professor Sycamore, Cynthia, and N as your draw supporters, because they're all amazing. Guzma as your main way of dragging your opponent's Pokemon in the active. Ultra Ball, because it's the best Pokemon search that we've got. Field Blower to get rid of your opponent's Pokemon tools. And Choice Band, because doing extra damage is always good. Floatstone to get some extra retreat, and Brooklyn Hill, as I mentioned, searches out basic fighting and water Pokemon, which, apart from like Mew, is basically this entire deck, so you need to use it. It's not a perfect deck. Something like a Zerkatree coming along with the ability blocking attacks from Pokemon with special energy attached. Honestly, Zerkatree is going to wreck your deck because you're not actually playing any basic energy so a single zerkatry here is just going to be like ah now you can't attack 
But you're hitting weakness against the two best types in the game. And you know what? If nothing else, that has got to be worth having a bit of a play with. Because you're hitting weakness against the two best Pokemon in the game. It's a little bit combo based. It's really reliant on special energy. You're not always going to draw your double colorless. You're not always going to get your Persimian out. There are going to be games where this deck does not run as efficiently as it could. And occasionally your opponent's going to play a Zerka tree. But ignore all of that, ladies and gentlemen, because you know what? This is a fun deck, and it deserves you having a bit of a play with it. But as with all of these decks, I want to hear from you guys. Let me know in the comment section, do you think this deck is legit? Or do you think it's a flash in the pan that will occasionally do well, but not enough for you to actually warrant playing it? Go nuts! But be nice. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and so on, you can do so over at patreon.com slash PTCG Radio. But by far the most important thing as always is to look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.